Here we're going to take a look at the Candy Sorter Eagle Engineering System. And this is the first print that we see. We're not usually going to go online with it, but it's a good way to overview. There, it is made with a main program that calls several sub-programs, such as the bin dropper, color sense, anything to do with the network, servo, utilities. The other thing we're going to look at, is just see how it does that, is near the bottom of here, we'll see this main program, after it's running, simply calls whatever subroutine. And if we were going to look at bin dropper, we would then know to go to the bin dropper and look at what its logic is. So let's go back to the main program. Then we'll switch to the printed books after, after a moment here. So here we see something. There is an HMI start. So they're saying when somebody pushes that, You'll have to review what that up arrow means. Remember, that's looking for that positive edge. Then it's going to turn on an enable to the conveyor. If it's enabled, and there is, what does this mean? This means the photo eye, the bin is dropped, but there is no bin in front of it. It starts a timer and starts that off delay, etc. And then there's a system start, system conveyor enable, However, that might work. So that's when we're looking at a particular thing. But often, we get a bit like this, and we don't know where it comes from. Example, we'll go into the bin dropper, and where did C150 come from? Well, in the next video, we're going to see how the printed cross-reference allows us easily to look up C. It's all printed out. We'll sort by address, and we see C150 is set in this program and it says it's in the main program rung 15 the bin drop it's main program rung 15 so we'll go to the main program and we'll scroll down to 15 and there we see it says somebody has to hit HMI start somebody has to push the HMI system mode, and there cannot be a bin. That's how I read it. And then that sets that. From there, there's other we'll look at, other logic we'll look at. So that's the main program. It has a couple features it does, and um, we'll look at it in the printed version. Here we've just opened the book, and we see the first page is the main PLC page 1 of 63. When we turn the next page, we see the very first rung 1 of the main program. In this program, this part only has 7 pages. There are other pages which are for the subroutines, and we'll get to those through the uh, document. So here we see just some initial values are being put into values so a timer, etc. Um, what the initializing timer does is another function, but it's talking to the HMI. Basically, it just keeps the screen at the splash screen, as we would call it, so nobody can operate it during this time. This allows the machine to get up to everything to settle and be ready to run. Now here we see at this one, the HMI system start, system stop, and that they're resetting so that it has it in a certain known motion. Last we left, we were looking kind of at that bin dropper, and we saw how these different bits cause something to happen. So here's where the bin dropper actually activates. Okay, this is the bin drop call. It says, hey, bin dropper, we're going to do something. When we see this type of nomenclature, A, it says it all doesn't fit on the page. We need to flip to the next page, and these are the three connections it was making. So here it looks like it puts the main conveyor in slow, it says we're in system mode, clears that, and 
um, it does something with the conveyor call. Each routine then has a name, and we're just going to kind of go through the main five, six, seven. And in this book, we've got a set of tabs that um, you know separate each program. So here we're in the bin dropper program. The question was C150. What made that? Well, we saw it a moment ago. But I want to show that further back in this listing is a cross-reference. And that cross-reference lists all the addresses in order for the entire machine. In fact, there's quite a few. And here we see we're only up to 112. And 150, we'll see if I got it on this page. What we're looking for, if it's turning on, we need to either find the set or the out command. This programmer uses a lot of sets due to the not retentive through power cycle by default. So when we look at that, we see C150 is turned on on the main program, rung 11. Okay, so that's C150. So, main program, going back to there. It was rung 11. And on the video of the thing, it may we've we changed the software, it might have. But we're looking for rung 11. Oh, we've crossed into the network program. They're in alphabetical, all except for main is always first. So here, go back here, rung two, rung f uh, Seems I gotta go back one tab, that'll help. Uh, here we're in the diverter. Color sense. Bin dropper. Now we're at the bin, at the main. So here, in this rung, we see it says the user has to push the HMI start button, the single mode, and this is the photo I bin dropper present. But they're checking for an off, so that tells us they're making sure there is no bin, otherwise it'll drop a bin on top of a bin. If those conditions are met, we have a bin drop call. So now we can go to the bin dropper program and see that that has become true. Now it then says there's these logical steps or sequence steps that it's making sure has not occurred. Let me show you what that does. C150 we know is true, and the first thing it does is set the next step, clear itself, and it also calls the color bit to go sense. Now when we look at that, this next rung can operate because when this rung finishes, this is set. Now it looks for the color sensor call bit to have gone to a negative transition, and it says we're moving on to C152 and resetting 151. This way only one rung is active at any time. 152 is active. It says there's a photo I bin dropper supply on input 7. Is that off or is it seeing bins? And if so it can set a bit C162 and say there's an error. Then there's another one that says if we're on 152 and the photo I bin dropped is present is off, then we can turn on Y6. Y6 activates the bin drop solenoid. It then moves to the next step and resets its current step. Then it says, well, if we are in this new step 153 and the bin drop solenoid is on, which it would be, 
it's going to activate a timer, T4. Now the time is held in this memory location. We don't see a comment, but it's some amount of time to sufficient for the bin to drop and release. And so T4 is going to be key, and we see at the next state, 153, is T4 done? If so, we can turn off Y6, and we can go on to the next step. When we're on the next step, it says, did the bin drop solenoid, did that go from off to on, etc. So we're always following the logic through anywhere we go. So the key to working with this is make sure you know what program you're in. Use that cross-reference to find where things are. And understand, after you get done through this large pack of book, there'll be another PLC program for the second conveyor. And the second conveyor looks similar, has logic. The pages are rotated in this view, but I'll just show them there. But there they are, able to be uh, accessed. So, biggest takeaway, use the cross-reference. Find out where the outs or sets are. The contacts is just where somebody else is using it. Okay. Um, you can trace any input, output, data values, and you can work your way all the way through to figure out. The only thing I'll comment is a lot of timers I tend to ignore, meaning when it gets its drive signal, it will do its job in time and then go on to the next thing. So when you see a chain like this, we're simply looking for the first thing and then what goes on. It'll take a while. The bugs are designed to walk you through so it's not overloading as you start in one place. Wherever it says HMI, no, that comes from the HMI screen. You don't have to worry about that. And any of these other bits, you can always look in the control, in the cross-reference, and see what drives that bit. How did it turn on? So that's working with the main program and the schematics.